Minnesota on Monday, naming Don Plitza White, its new women's basketball coach, comes to Minnesota from West Virginia, where she spent just one season coaching the Mountaineers to the NCAA tourney this year. It was the fourth straight team she has taken to the dance, including a sweet 16 run a year ago at South Dakota. Don Plitza White joins us now to talk about her new position. Coach, congratulations. What have these last few days been like for you? Well, it's been it's been a whirlwind in sorts, but it's been a lot, a lot of fun and had a chance to meet the young ladies here. And certainly that's been great for us. Well, you mentioned the young ladies there. Uh, Lindsey Whalen obviously recruited really well. They had a great freshman class this year. A number of these players have already said that they are going to stay on board. So it's not like this is a total rebuild here. Give me a sense of kind of what you see when you evaluate this program and where you can take it here in the short term. Well, I certainly believe that we have some young ladies who are really hungry and energetic and excited to do well and and willing to jump in and get started right away. And so that's been something that's been really fun. It's been we started our workouts on Tuesday and getting after it. And they've been they ask a lot of good questions. You know, they want to do things the way that that we want them to do them. And so it's been a lot of a lot of there's been a lot of energy with the group so far. I bet you made the Sweet 16 at South Dakota. You did it with a roster chock full of players from the state of Minnesota. To what extent do you believe that you can build a program largely around Minnesota natives? Well, we've had a great, I've been in coaching for a few years, you know, I don't, don't want to tell you the exact number, but quite a few of those years have been recruiting in the state of Minnesota. And we really believe that there's a tremendous amount of talent in our state. There are some great players, but also they've been really well coached. And so our, our goal is to really develop our recruiting base and continue to keep it centered around the state of Minnesota and around our region. You use the term process oriented to describe what you do. Can you elaborate on the process? Like, give me a sense of and what did you start with? You know, you mentioned you've already worked out some of these players. What did that entail? And what is the process of going from starting anew at a program to turning it into a competitive NCAA tournament type team? Well, the first thing that we talked about is what it, it takes from a competitive standpoint. And so certainly the first goal for us was to find a way to compete in all the drills that we were working on, whether that is you know, scoring around the rim in different ways, whether that's in just strictly finishing plays you know, or, or taking care of the basketball in some of the two-on-two, three-on-three, four-on-four scenarios. But being highly competitive is really the first thing that we are focusing on. And so when you learn to compete in, in all the things that you're doing, Sometimes you can find a way to be successful, even though it wasn't exactly what you planned it out to be. You know, there are possessions, for example, you, you go to score the ball around the rim, but you don't finish it on the first possession and you tip it, tip it, keep it alive. Or maybe it takes four offensive rebounds to put it back in. And we kind of joke and we say players are padding their stats at that point in time. <laughs> but really, ultimately, the first focus for us is to, to compete at a really high level. You are from Wisconsin. You have spent some time in this conference. You were assistant coach early in your career at the University of Wisconsin, then worked with Kevin Borseth at the University of Michigan. To what extent did your familiarity with this league make this job appealing to you? It made it a great appeal for for me personally, for our family, you know. But really, the the understanding of the Big Ten and and how competitive the teams are, you know, and what the recruiting base is, all of those all those factors came into making this decision. And and for me personally, an opportunity to return to our home area, really, and to be around our family. And so that's been something that you know really has been fun for us to reconnect with a lot of the the coaches. You know, but also to have some family around as well. You mentioned your family. You grew up on a farm in Wisconsin, north of Milwaukee. How did that lifestyle and kind of that childhood influence the coach that you've become? 
Well, I think the three expectations within our program are, are directly related to who, how I was raised. You know, my parents both worked full time and we farmed on the side. And so it was, it was get home from work or get home from school and then start farming when farming is really a full time job in and of itself. And so I, I think the, the work ethic, the, the understanding of being in the moment, the understanding of finding a way all came from how I was raised. And I'm really blessed and really fortunate to now be back close to home. What was your most favorite and least favorite farm chore, Coach? <laughs> uh, least favorite was probably baling hay. That was hot. That was hard. But I, I feel like it got a lot stronger doing that. Uh, most favorite? I don't know that I really had a most favorite. I'm not going to lie about that. that. They're all pretty hard and challenging. But, you know, the least favorite was definitely bailing hay. The term chore kind of implies not really a favorite, right? Like no that, one that's really. That's exactly right. No one really embraces the notion of chores. Uh, you met your, your husband, Jay, at a high school all-star game. You are both really good high school basketball players. In Wisconsin, you got a son who plays college basketball, a daughter who plays college basketball. How much does basketball dominate your world in your home, your discussions, your interactions with your family? Well, it's obviously a major part of who we are and what's certainly what's going on in their lives right now. They're right in the middle of it. They're in the middle of their their college careers, and it's been a big part of our life for a long time because of that. But I think ultimately it, there's a competitiveness in our family and everything that we do. So card games get pretty heated. Uh, if there's a one-on-one -on -one game or two-on-two. -two. Last time I played two-on-two, -two, it, it became a little bit uh, a little challenging for for my husband and I to keep up with those two college athletes. <laughs> and trying to play with those guys. But, you know, there are four point guards in our family, so there are, are a lot of people who are trying to say, this is how we should do things, or let's go compete, or let's get after it. And do you pick their brains at all when you think about your team? I mean, legitimately, they, they obviously all know the game really well. Do, do you talk X's and O's they, and, and ask for advice might be the wrong word, but feedback? Well, our family gives me a lot of feedback. I don't even know that I have to ask for it all the time. You know, but really they, they see things and they see things at a really high level. And so it's been a lot of fun to share with each other those experiences. Well, what's the balancing act between parenting your kids and coaching them? Like the flip side of what we're talking about here. Well, it's, it's challenging for me personally because I don't really get to see our kids play in person very often and so I get to watch them online a lot of times either live during their games or catch you know download the games and watch them later and so what I really focus on is how many times did you huddle your team up you know did you get them together at free throws did you go offensive or defensive rebound those type of things did you play really hard so those are the areas that 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 I focus on in talking to our kids about their games. Coach, this is Women's History Month. I'm interested as you talk about influences on you. Who are the women who have inspired you to do what you do? Well, the neat part about it is that one of the, the females who really had a, a great impact on me is Jane Albright. And, and, and we worked together for you know a time at the University of Wisconsin. And she's someone who continues to reach out and continues to stay connected. But someone who I think just did a tremendous job of building the excitement uh, around you know Wisconsin women's basketball. At the time when I was there, we opened the Cole Center and had over 16,000 fans in the first, in the first, get the first contest. And so, you know, really have a, a great, great deal of respect for Jane. Jane introduced me to Pat Summit, so that was really pretty special, you know. And, and so she's she's someone who still is of great impact, a uh, great influence in my life, and someone who obviously you know has been in the Big Ten. So we'll have to pick her brain for some more ideas now. Coach, that was certainly a, a while ago when the Cole Center opened. The Big Ten women's basketball, I think, was was different. There were certainly some really strong teams in that time as well. But you look at the league right now. Three teams in the Sweet 16. You had a number one seed that, that got bounced out as well in Indiana. So a really strong league, as you have observed it from the outside since you last were an assistant in the league under Coach Borseth. Why do you think it's kind of had this resurgence here? What do you attribute that to? Certainly, I believe that there are two reasons why. One is because there is a great level of – there are great coaches in the league, and, and I think the great coaches in the league have done a tremendous job of bringing in great talent to, to the league. And so when you put some – pair up some great coaches with some top-notch talent – 
obviously then you have an opportunity to play at a really high level, and we're seeing that right now. New Minnesota women's coach, Don Plitzewhite. Coach, congratulations. Really appreciate your time, and best of luck. Looking forward to watching your teams compete here starting next season. Sounds great. Thank you so much.